grew up with these dudes. Uh, you know what I'm saying? This woman held me down. But she probably was an Uber car to get you to a certain level, and she had to let you off, and then you got to go get another Uber car. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we, we don't look at people as Uber drivers. I look at everything as an Uber driver. You might take me a long distance, but at a certain point, that ride got to end, and I got to be able to jump out the car and get into the next car. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Let's talk about a little bit of rap. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you were at one point DJ Khaled's artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was signed to We the We the Best. I don't even like saying no more, but go ahead. Okay. That's can we talk about that? You know, whole experience. Obviously, you know, your name is big time down there in um in Florida and whatnot. Can you talk about that situation? You're very outspoken. It's been a while and I heard you talk about it, but you're very outspoken about what happened with that whole situation. Well, my whole thing with that is very great very good learning experience mm -hmm. dj Khaled is one of the best that ever did it you know i don't like the we, we had a difference as a, in opinion the way he do business he's not a great business guy he's all you know he's one of the guys where he a wolf he only hunt you understand me the people that you know he could he could kill or whatever and that's fine but mm -hmm. it's a certain difference between hunting for yourself and hunting with a pack when you hunting with a pack, you making sure everybody eat. You know what I'm saying? And as you can see, the only thing left over that we the best is DJ Khaled. Even Votto, even Mubato, and Mubato, my nigga, and Votto still follow me on the gram, and he fuck with me. I fuck with him. They they just, they, they carrying on what they had before him. And Ace Hood is Ace Wood. Like, ever since his Rolex fell off, he fell down, and ain't nobody picked him back up. So, the first in the Bible to say the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So I was one of the last people that had an opportunity to get on stage and to get a look when I was on DJ Khaled label. And I used to, you know, and, and I used to weep at night knowing that I had to go back home to Roach's Rats and I had to feed my daughters. And I used to wonder why he wouldn't help me. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew I had this stuff in me and it wasn't on me. And it was like, I didn't understand. I remember Birdman going to him like, man, we got to put this guy in position. This guy got it. And he just holding me down. And then I realized later after I got over the women, after I got over the life, after I got over the traveling through him, I realized why he was holding me back. He was holding me back because I was still attached to the streets and he wasn't. He was more in a concubine where he go to the radio station. He go home. He, I was still out there. I was still able to come past, you know, what I learned in the streets to him and he can transcend it on records. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, people could hold you down. I just did a video just now, man, about how people will hold you back if they feel like you're going to be bigger than him. And I don't have bigger than them. I, I don't have no hate or no re, no re, uh, no 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 bad energy towards DJ Khaled. I actually am proud every time I see him on a BT or a mm -hmm. Grammy or something like that. It made me feel good because I'm a part of that story. I just could never do business with him no more. You know what I'm saying? Right. We had Ace Hood actually on the platform yesterday, man. It was a great conversation. That's a good brother. I heard. Uh, I remember back when you guys had your issue. Are you guys y'all good now? I know you just do the Ace Wood uh, jab. Are y'all cool now? Hey, hey, I want to say this. The only reason I really can say back in the game, I, re I forgive people. I just don't forget shit. Yeah. I don't have a problem with Ace Hood as a person. I have a problem when I was signed to Khaled. You know, he came to me crying about certain situations he was going through with, his, with the label. And I gave him game. I'm like, look, man, you need to get out here on your own and do this shit. Like, you done built up. I'm giving him the game like I do on the internet. And I'm just asking him for it. I'm like, man, Khaled ain't, you know, me and Khaled more so friends than we as artists, CEO relationship. You got the artist and CEO relationship. I'd rather have your shoes. Fuck this shit I'm doing with this nigga. Let, let's do it like this. So, you know, he just ain't never extend his hand the right way he should have when me and him built them bonds we built. It was more of a, I felt like it was a Judas situation. I felt like it was a Peter situation where he denied me. You know what I'm saying? And, not just that, like, one time I pull up on him, like, after the We The Best shit, and after he got our We The Best, I pull up on him to support one of his little hour release parties. This is what really got me mad. I pull up on him. I got one of my model chicks with me. And, you know, one of his guys seen me, and it was like, yo, you can't come in here. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm coming to support my brother. What the fuck? <clears throat> man, you can't come in here, man. You better get from Ryan here, man. You know what I'm saying? So he got all these security, everything around. So I go to Ace. Ace don't say nothing. 
I go through. I say, fuck this nigga. I go through and I see, hey, I say, what's up with it, my nigga? Nigga act like he don't even hear me talking to him. So I say, fuck you too, nigga. And I left. And we seen each other at the heat game. You understand me? On the floor, he on the floor, I'm on the floor. We ain't speak. You know, it just was like that. But I for, I just seen him at a celebrity basketball game. I ain't say nothing to him for the rest of my life. I forgive him, but I can't forget what he did as a man. His character spoke volumes to me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Was it a situation where, um, as far as Gita Cal, that he took money, or was it that he just didn't put you in a you know right position to get the type of money? They ain't, just- steal, they ain't steal no money from me. Cal ain't never give me no money. I came to Cal with my own money. I came to, I came to Cal with drug money, and I told him, look, man, I got my own money. I just need the imprint. But at a certain point, I got tired of selling dope. You know what I'm saying? I got tired of selling dope. So I'm like, man, fuck this freak shit. Like, I'm getting records that's hot. I got a record with Gucci Man. It's, it's, it's the number one record in Miami. I got this record here with this one and that one with that one. I had a record with Rose, Rick Ross. And it's like, he's not gravitating to nothing. He just downplaying everything. I'm never getting a big budget video. I'm never getting a fucking little budget video. I'm shooting my own videos and I'm signing you. And it's like, at a certain point, people asking why you not growing? Because if you're not growing after a while, the people that's following you like, yo, this nigga just going to keep doing the same shit. We mm-hmm. over that. What's the next nigga? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Can you do us? Um, can you break down the code for us a little bit, man? Now, we grew up. The shit was completely different than what we see now. We just had a young boy on the platform from Ohio, very talented artist. Who didn't seem the same, didn't share the same opinions that we did when it comes to snitch culture, dealing with rats, dealing with honor, dealing with uh, certain levels of credibility, accountability. Can you just talk about what, what, what a game is at to you right now and where it's at as far as the code and people doing shit that wouldn't customarily be done and things like that? How do you feel about that? Um, best way to explain that is this. It's a money-driven game now. It ain't about substance. It ain't about standing on principles. It don't matter what I feel. That's what it is. They pushing the agenda out here. The agenda, we could cry about it all day, but here's the truth. This is a white man business. The rap business is a Jew business. They own this motherfucker, man. Like, they pushing artists that they can control. 6 9 ine ain't going to get them no money. Like, he's an investment. He's going to get the returns. When I say he ain't going to get them no money, he's not going to cost them to, to, to push him. It's an easy push. White kids, college kids, and bitches. You know what I'm saying? So what we got to do is, as the real, we just got to hold our own and understand what they doing. And if we going to push anything, we just got to have people around us that's pushing the same shit we own. No, I don't like the snitch culture. No, I don't like the new cancel culture. No, I don't like nothing that's going on. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the money and the resources or the platforms that these people got, because they could shut you down. This platform we own is owned probably by a white Jewish man. The platform YouTube owned by a Jewish man. Facebook owned by Mark Cuban. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, shout out to Mark Cuban, that's my guy. But yeah. Mark Zuckerberg on, on, on Facebook and Instagram. These are old uh, 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 um, white people, and we don't own our own platform. TikTok, I believe, owned by the Asians. And we don't own nothing. It's really so much we could say before they put that muzzle on you because the new slavery is to control your money, not to control your body. Your body is controlled by your ability to want money and if they control their money by waving in front of you it's going to make your body move the way they want you to move and in return that's why we got the game the way we got it right now everybody making these you know they, they dressing like women they, they doing mm. the switching they doing everything they want to do because they getting paid off it but they don't know they selling their soul and once you sell your soul you can't sell it back once it's over with you can't get your soul back you know what I'm saying mm. and that's just how I feel Break down the independent hustle, if you will. You've been doing your thing for a long time, especially down there in, um, I think, Dade County. You break that down, your independent hustle in music? I love independence. I got I got four deals on the table right now. I got one with Nike. I got one with this clothing line called Streets is Watching. I got a podcast deal on the table. I got a couple deals on the table right now. I got a podcast deal with QC on the table right now. And not to throw nobody under the bus, but I'm pretty much going to turn all of them down because of independence, because of the ability to say what I want to say. 
being signed is being enslaved. When you are independent, you own your own freedom. Like literally, you can sleep when you want to sleep. You can say, I take the day off when I feel like to. Like I got my own corporations. I own three business offices in Miami and the biggest, like the biggest industrial parts of Miami. I'm doing my own thing and I'm doing it my way. I don't want all the money. You understand me? I just want my legacy because I understand I'm going to be worth more dead than alive because the stuff I'm saying going over a lot of people's heads right now. But when I die, they're going to look more into it. And they're going to get it the right way. So I'm cool with that. So I'm working for my death. I'm working for my kids. And the independence thing is like, my whole thing is if I can make 100% profit, you understand me? Because I done worked this hard. I done gained a million followers on every platform besides YouTube. I done gained a million followers on all these platforms independently. Why not keep going and just do it the way I want to do it instead of letting somebody control my leadership and my wordplay? You know what I'm saying?